We are here, rejoice, to talk about corruption. We are here because there are many things wrong with one thing that's going on. I will have a little bit of a recap of the story. For those of you who don't know, Elon Musk was screwed out of 50 65, pardon me, I believe, billion dollars, 56, 65, I can't remember, we'll get into it. There is a figure in one of the stats that we will read here, one of the articles that we'll read from here. But this, in turn, uh, is casting doubt in many Tesla shareholders' minds. I'm a Tesla shareholder. This has, does not affect me at all. Um, but what it's saying about Tesla and Tesla shareholders is going to have a an outsized effect on the market writ large. Uh, then we're going to talk about why this is happening. We're going to talk about the who's involved. We're going to talk about the exact reason. This has come out on Twitter recently that this is happening. And then uh, maybe, hopefully, something that's a little bit more fun to think about as far as this story is concerned. Now, the quotes that I have sort of explaining this event on on the screen here come from a Yahoo article, uh, 56, I guess it is, billion dollars. The article itself is not worth reading because it's so biased, but this I selected some of the paragraphs therefrom in order to get a little bit of a rundown on what happened. A decision by a Delaware judge to throw out Elon Musk's $56 billion Tesla pay package is a threat to the wealth of the world's richest man. It also could alter the way CEO compensation is decided at companies across America. I'm going to stop right there. No, it's not. What's going to happen is everyone is going to move their corporations out of Delaware. Delaware, um... <clears throat> Well, we'll get to that in point three, but it's going to cause people to take their corporations out of Delaware, which is going to cause a wind, a, a waterfall moment for business in America, for the tax code in Delaware. This is going to prove very, very sticky. This is going to prove very, very nasty for the state of Delaware. What McCormick found is that Tesla's directors had breached their fiduciary duty when they awarded Musk the largest compensation opportunity. This is important. <clears throat> Ever. Granted to a public company executive. Why? <clears throat> Pardon me. Because of his extensive ties between people negotiating the pay package and lack of public disclosure about Musk's relationship with those who approved the deal. This word, opportunity, is very important because if he hadn't come through with the numbers that were set forth, he would have been paid nothing, nothing, okay? So he risked not, paying, not being paid anything in order for incredible returns for the company and its shareholders because Tesla got those incredible returns. Elon Musk ended up with the largest compensation by a public company executive ever. Put simply, neither the compensation committee nor the board acted in the best interests of the company when negotiating Musk's compensation plan. In fact, there is barely any evidence of negotiations at all, McCormick wrote. McCormick, the judge, you fool, you idiot, you moron, you piece of garbage. There was very little negotiation because if he did not 10x the value of the company, well, if he didn't double the value of the company, he got absolutely nothing. Instead, he 10x'd the value of the company and kept going during this bubble of a market that was put on by inflation that old Joey B had something to do with. But we'll get back to that in a moment as well. I think that this will make directors wary of offering big pay packages to make the CEO happy, added Dunn, who is an expert on executive compensation. Not much of an expert. Do I honestly think it will lower CEO pay overall? No, but I do think it will rein in the extremes of which Tesla was not alone. Now, Dunn, 
you fool, you idiot, you moron, you piece of garbage. CEO pay and compensation are not the big problem. The big problem is that dunces like Mary Barra are making hundreds of millions of dollars for adding and contributing absolutely zero, at least as far as we can tell from the outside. Elon Musk is not that guy. Elon Musk is the head engineer. Elon Musk contributes sometimes even on the factory floor. We have heard tales of this. Do you think for one moment, Mary Barra at GM is on the factory floor? I promise you she is not. It is not CEO pay overall, you communist, which is the problem. The problem is people you basically usurping value from a company that give nothing in return. The article goes on. The shareholder's attorney, the shareholder in question who is suing Tesla, who had sued Tesla, owned nine shares of Tesla and was also an idiot. Greg Varallo, Varallo said when Musk's compensation plan was reached in 2018, it was around 33 times larger than the largest pay package in history. No, you idiot, it wasn't. When it was reached in 2018, it was worth zero. He did not have a pay. You fool. He had incentives. These people are worthless. These people are absolutely worthless. They don't even know what they're commenting on, but they feel absolutely necessary to comment regardless. Which was Musk's prior compensation deal reached in 2014. It was so large that it single-handedly skewed the compensation data, Varayo said. This idea that all of a sudden a billion dollars is now conceivable is due entirely to this package. <clears throat> if you erase this package by rescinding it, my guess is the comparability data begins to deflate. Well, don't guess, you idiot. If you have these opinions, you owe it to everyone willing to listen to you to actually have the thing figured out. Musk's compensation plan was crafted to pay out in 12 separate, tr separate tranches of Tesla stock options, but only in the event that the company achieved a series of $50 billion market cap increases, coupled with either revenue or adjusted EBITDA targets over four consecutive quarters. Everyone at the time that Elon Musk signed this deal, everyone said that it was impossible. Everyone said it was crazy. Everyone said he was not going to get paid anything at all. He accomplished all of those tranches and was therefore to be compensated. And some judge comes out of left field on behalf of some shareholder who has nine shares and says, no, no, uh, I don't think that that is okay. I am a judge. Judge Dredge. This right here is the sad sack in question. Kathleen, Kathleen McCormick. So McCormick, where I'm from is a type of vodka and whiskey. And if you look at the rosy nature of her cheeks, she looks like an alcoholic to me. Now, Kathleen, K-A-T-H-A-L-E-E-N, the, um, I'm not going to get into it, um, from, university, from Harvard University is where she was educated. So, you know, she thinks she's important. She's pretty sure she is one of the smartest people you ever could meet. But, is she important or just self-righteous? She's the same judge, and we'll get into this a little bit later, who forced Musk to buy Twitter, even though it certainly appeared that they were fraudulently inflating their number of users. We'll get into that in just one second. Um, Ivy League, East Coast, Northeast, all of these things combine in order to give us this judge here. Now, maybe that's not fair, but when was the last time you were actually impressed by someone who came from, for example, Harvard? Don't worry, 
I'll wait. This is what the elites are, not Elon Musk. Elon Musk lived in his factory for a while. Elon Musk lived on an office floor for a while. Elon Musk, an immigrant himself, came to this country with very little. So, it's not Elon Musk that is the elite. It is these people, these Ivy League connected people. These people who are absolutely sure that they are worth so much to society, but contribute so little. What has she done? What has this person done to deserve the type of power that it takes to tell someone their payday is null and void? Their payday agreed on between themselves and their company is null and void. Kathleen here was not there for the entirety of this run. She just decided Elon Musk did not earn that money. Why? Because of some principle that she thinks she has, I guess. Not really by any letter of the law, simply through interpretation of said law. Interpretation, which used to be why people would flock to incorporate their companies to Delaware, which is this third point. Notably, many companies are incorporated in Delaware because traditionally they have a very understandable interpretation of the law. There is not a whole lot of theory which goes into interpretation in Delaware. People are told to incorporate there because if trouble should come up, and in this litigious country it will, they know how the system works. There will be no surprises. There will be no EFAS pitches. There will be nothing strange which happens. And now there is. But it seems, Delaware, why Delaware? It seems that there is some other national embarrassment and piece of human trash that comes from Delaware. It seems that Delaware is on the, the tip of my tongue for some reason when it comes to incompetence. Oh, right. Old Joey B himself. Joe Biden who is on the record saying about Elon Musk, I think that Elon Musk's corporation and or technical relationships with other countries is worthy of being looked at. Now, there was no evidence for anything. Elon Musk, uh, Joe Biden basically just gave a green light, if you, if you understand the term green light, on Elon Musk. Elon Musk was then persecuted by no fewer than three government agencies. Government agencies that are presided over by old Joey B here, by Brandon himself. Now, she's from, she works in Delaware. She is uh, a judge in Delaware, Kathleen. Joe Biden is from Delaware. Is there anything else like a missing link here that we should know about? Maybe it's just conjecture. This comes to us from Kinakoa the Great on Twitter. Judge Kath Kathleen McCormick rescinded Elon Musk's $55 billion Tesla compensation package, overturning the company's board and 80% of its shareholders, that 80% which approved the deal before some idiot came in and said, no, I don't think that's okay. McCormick also ruled against Elon Musk during his Twitter acquisition before becoming the head of the Delaware Chancery Court. McCormick worked at a Delaware law firm called Young Conaway. This firm and its employees have been major donors to President Joe Biden for decades. In 2016, Hunter Biden hosted a gubernatorial campaign event with Congressman John Carney, with then Vice President Joe Biden as the guest speaker. This event took place at the law offices of Young Conaway in Wilmington, Delaware. Carney 
a close friend of Joe Biden for the last four decades, later became governor and nominated Kathleen McCormick, a partner at Young Conaway, to her position on the Delaware Chancery Court. In a March 2018 email, Hunter Biden, the missing link himself, claimed to personally know every judge on the Delaware Chancery Court while threatening legal action against his Chinese business partners. I will bring the suit in the Chancery Court in Delaware, which, as you know, is my home state, and I am privileged to have worked with and know every judge on the Chancery Court. After Elon Musk purchased Twitter with the stated goal of restoring free speech, President Biden called for a federal investigation into Musk on the podium at the White House. Following this, the Biden Department of Justice, Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Trade Commission initiated legal action and investigations against Tesla, SpaceX and X. One of these things that they took, uh, they brought to SpaceX, a space company a company which has been told they are at the forefront of domestic, of what might be attacked in a domestic, in a terrorist event. They were told, SpaceX was told, they do not hire enough immigrants, non-citizens. They were told this. The, the previous sort of idea was that you would only hire citizens at companies like this because of the grave threat and danger of someone trying to infiltrate that system. They brought that against SpaceX. SpaceX. What buffoonery. This is all going to be remembered very poorly in a few years. This era in which we are currently living is going to be looked back on. And it, it will not be good. The recent decision by McCormick, who worked with Biden's top donors, was nominated by Biden's close friend to override Tesla's board and the majority of its shareholders is another clear example of the Biden administration and its allies weaponizing the American legal system against their political opponents. Yes, that is exactly what this is. The number five point that I have here. And now we wait. Here's what's going to be fun moving forward. Elon Musk does not screw around. Elon Musk does not take this type of thing, injustice, lightly. He does not take this type of thing, corruption, lightly. He's already arranging to move Tesla's place of incorporation away from Delaware. He will open up a vote in the next, um, what is it called? The um, shareholder meeting. And do not be mistaken, this will pass. Tesla will no longer be incorporated in the state of Delaware. He's referred to the woke mind virus. He has said that it has to go away. He has talked extensively about DEI initiatives. Elon Musk is 100% on board here. Now, Elon Musk is also the type of individual who is oftentimes incredibly motivated by anger. Now, this Karen piece of garbage just stole $56 billion from him. I'd be mad too. He's been criticized and chastised by the likes of the lowly Bob Iger. Joe Biden put out the green light on him. The most effective entrepreneur in world history, and that's what Elon Musk is, love him or hate him. He is the most effective entrepreneur in world history. That's how he got the status he is. You can hate him all you want. You can disagree with him every day of the week. You can just cringe at the very mention of Elon Musk all the live long day. You cannot deny the guy's really good at making money. 
And now, Elon Musk, this guy, motivated by anger. Elon Musk, this guy, most effective, one of the most effective individuals, period, in history, has a brand new rogues gallery.